this is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Um, we have people like Stan Meyer. And you've heard this, uh, it, it, people think, is it an urban myth or not that, that Mr. Meyer had a car running on water that had one of these electrolyzers that would take water dissociated into hydrogen and oxygen and run it in real time without a fuel cell, without storing it? Yes, he did. Um, unfortunately, he falsified all his patents, which vitiated their legal viability because he didn't want anyone to know his little secret. And then he died mysteriously after he was meeting with some people from NATO. Ran out of a cracker barrel in somewhere, I think, in Tennessee and collapsed in the parking lot saying, I've been poisoned, I've been poisoned, I've been poisoned. Now, my team has met with his twin brother who actually did the circuits for him in the 80s and 90s. Uh, and this is a very doable, reproducible experiment if we had a laboratory, which is what we've been calling for the funding to do. But what Stan Meyer did, and this is something I'm going to go into, what have been the mistakes? How can we learn from the last, well, the mistakes I've made in the last 15 years, but the mistakes others have made in the last 24? So if I were to drop dead tonight, one of the reasons I'm making this film is I'd like for people to know, have the benefit of what I've gone through and what I've learned, because it is not obvious. It is not, it is very counterintuitive. Like most inventors, uh, and I've never had this mindset, Stan Meyer felt that, well, he can monetize this by keeping it, the, the little secret formula, putting a patent into the patent office, but not putting all the detail in so no one else could really reproduce it. But of course, if you can't reproduce the technology from the patent, the patent is useless, as you know, and you can talk to any patent attorney. Um, it, that's the whole point of a patent, is to protect it. <laughs> Otherwise, you keep it a trade secret, like the secret ingredients of Coca-Cola. Um, and what happened is that he died before he could really find a way to move it out, because about the time his little invention became known, where even wastewater could be used to run your house or car through in a generator just burning hydrogen and oxygen gas, which has zero pollution, because the, you have water vapor as the tailpipe which you can actually put back into the system and keep using it, the water. You're just pulling out the energy equivalent of the bonds, the atomic bonds, and the way that you're breaking them at very low power is what I'm gonna keep referring to as this magic sweet spot. High voltage and at very specific resonant frequencies depending on the substrate. By substrate, I mean water, crystalline material, air, magnetic coils. So you think of those as substrates, but the principle is what you need to understand. It's very high voltage, specific resin, and we're not talking 110 or 220, thousands of, or millions of volts at very, very specific cycles per second, resonances, depending on the material, that opens what's called a pointing vector into the zero point energy field and bow, then you're gonna hit that sweet spot. You're gonna go, quote, over unity, meaning you're getting more power out than in. But unfortunately, Stan Meyer, while he had an authentic system, and he had really, people said, how did he come across this? And an accidental empirical observation, which is really the sort of the springboard of many sciences, an accidental observation by someone who's astute. And he worked at a radar plant. And he observed that under certain frequencies and voltages, water just went It was quite an accidental observation. He went, wow, because H2O, two hydrogen and one oxygen, you can burn it. And when you burn it, there's no pollution. All you have is water vapor from the result of burning it. So he went, wow. So he started experimenting, and his twin brother Steve helped him, eventually developed the circuits. Now, because he wanted to keep this secret and he did not disperse in an open source way that technical information, everyone who's tried to reproduce and hasn't been able to. 
because they haven't, A, understood the concepts very well, and then even if they have, they have been approached eventually and threatened. And we're going to talk about the suppression and the threats that go with this kind of technology, which is real. And when he was developing this, he eventually got discovered that he could use a material that was in a, a magnetically charged sort of liquid in a toroid. A toroid is a donut, like it looks like a, okay. And this was an electromagnetic generator, it didn't burn any so-called Brown's gas or, or water turning it into hydrogen and oxygen. And this object was the big secret of his portfolio that we were trying to acquire a few years ago, five or six years ago, those of you who followed our work. The heirs of the Stan Meyer collection wanted to sell it. Um, and we had a few hundred thousand dollars, but we didn't have millions. So we, we lost. And it went to a corporation that's in Michigan, which is all we need to talk about, that has been working on it since. And they are making the identical mistake that Stan Meyer made. They're doing it secretively. I was recently called in a panic by one of their funders out of the United Kingdom who stated to me that they had gotten these systems to operate, including the toroid, which means that if you have a solid state, basically a solid state system with some magnetically charged material in it, and it'll run your house. Now that device had a national security order slapped on it. And most people, Stan Meyer never spoke of it because he was told if you speak of this, you're violating the National Security Act and we'll seize it and you'll be in prison. So we knew this from someone who had worked very, very, very closely because this man who'd walked, worked closely with Stan Meyer said, forget the car running on water, that's nothing. Look for the toroid. So when we went there to the storage facility where all this stuff was kept, it was there. And all the binders and all the inventor's books and all the manual, everything was there. We went, oh, wow. We made appeals to the public. You know, I'm a doctor and I'm, okay, I'm doing okay, but I'm not rich enough to just lay out several million dollars. I can't write a check like that. So we did what we could, but we lost. Now, when Stan Meyer had this, of course, he wasn't prepared to go mano a mano with the national security state because he was afraid. I mean, they made it very clear. You're going to prison. And that's that, uh, or worse. At a certain point after he passed away, that all the stuff, as I said, went into storage. So from 1996 to 2009, whenever it was, a few years ago, it was just sort of nobody knew what happened to it. And then it surfaced. And we, we were really trying to do it. The tragedy of today is that in the last month or so, I got this phone call. And I had predicted at the time that that collection disappeared. I said, if it's going to be handled the way these people are stating they're going to handle it, which is to do it secretively, trying to cor corporatize, monetize, and privatize this technology, first of all, it's going to take them several years to get it operational because these were traditional engineers who didn't understand the physics. So you've got to get the right physicists and engineers on your team. Um, or, and folks like myself who've seen these things in labs, we'll talk about this. I've been to classified labs where I've seen them operating. The second thing is that you have got to do it. Cameras rolling, streamed on Ustream. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? Would Silicon Valley ever buy into this or Microsoft or Google or Apple? No because everything's about patents and secrecy and getting over on your competitor. But if you play that secrecy game, guess who's gonna be watching everything you're doing in real time keystroke by keystroke on every computer in your lab? The National Security Agency and the National Security State. The instant you hit the eureka moment, they're coming in with an NSO, a national security order, and you're shut down. That's what happens. And unfortunately, that is what has now happened to this group out of Michigan where they are being threatened, and they are trying to relocate their entire lab to a friendly country. 
So I talked to this man out of the United Kingdom, I won't say who, what his name is, who's been helping fund it, I mean millions of dollars, and I said, look, there are no friendly countries. You put this in the Amazon jungle, there's a E-Systems Raytheon facility there with security people who will come in. You, where are you going to go on this planet where, that's beyond the reach of the, what I call transnational super state of security? Because it is transnational. So there's, there's this naivete, and I'm speaking now to all you inventors out there and all you people who li live in the world of inventions and patents and secrecy. There's no place you can hide, and there's no place you can run. Believe me. Please believe me when I tell you this. And therefore, you must do it openly with the whole world watching. Good phrase from the 60s, the whole world's watching. Now, 10 years ago, you couldn't have done that. There wasn't Ustream and Yahoo uh, and whatever, uh, YouTube and all this stuff. Now there is. So not the bathrooms of the lab, but all the workstations of the lab, real time streamed on the internet and invite people to see it. Someone comes in with a national security order, you caught them red handed. And then I'm on all, every network I can get on and I've been on almost every network in the world saying, the technologies that would save the environment, get us off oil, are being ruthlessly suppressed by a rogue group of people who are not being supervised by the President and the Congress and without the consent of the people. This is an illegal act and we need people to help us. Democracy. Thank you.